Hey everybody, it's Hyper, and today this is going to be the first installment of a new series I want to do for Scum, which will be a lore and backstory series. And the first thing we're going to look at is something that I'm personally fascinated by, and I think it adds a ton to the universe, um, even though it might make the game much more challenging and feel completely different, and that's the Wild Hunters. We haven't heard much about them, we've only seen tidbits here and there and it's all very early in development and conceptual, but nonetheless, what we've seen so far is really cool. And uh, I want to dive into it and kind of take a look at and speculate upon what we've received so far from Thomas Lav and the devs over at Gamefires. So let's take a look at the Wild Hunters. First, let's delve into their history. The story behind these creatures is grim and sad. Before the island was turned into a TV show, citizens were dwelling there, the common folk. The company not only took their jobs, but also did everything to push them off the island. Nobody realized what was going on. The company's operatives poisoned the water and food sources which caused many people to get ill and die from cancer. However, some of them survived and were claimed to be dead by the company itself. Their burials were staged, and company took them deep underground to hidden facilities. Here, they studied their immune system, which turned out to be very resilient, and were even able to ward off some serious diseases, like cancer. Kids and women were primary testing subjects, and they were frequently exposed to different experiments, which included cocktails of drugs, synthetic hormones, and radiation to provoke responses from their immune systems. The purpose was to create the serum capable of restoring the body from almost any type of disease or physical damage. The company soon got results and Phoenix Tears were created, an experimental secret military grade injectable. It provides rapid and instantaneous stabilization and recovery of any and all injuries at once, perhaps even death but it's rare as a snowflake touching down in hell. The rest of this document is under a blur, and it's top secret, potentially redacted from the rest of the company, as it's probably not for anyone else's eyes in modern day, because we know Tech-01 is not really known for being ethical or transparent about these things. But this does give us a pretty good glimpse into the history and the background of the sad reality of why the Wild Hunters fit into the scum setting. In this tweet, Thomas Leff says, This should not be leaked out yet, so keep it to yourself or I might get in trouble. And this was posted on January 11th. If we look closer at the picture, you can see that it's showing different levels of these caves, or potentially those are surface levels that go down into the caves through these long chutes or tunnels. We can see structures littered throughout this image, smokestacks on the surface as well as their shelters. On the left side, we can see eggs and a bunch of different texts describing different building materials, carving in stone, wood, rock stuff like that and this shows us that these wild hunters have a basic understanding of how to build structures with more complex materials that they can make from the world around them now it looks like these smokestacks and these spires are serving as chimneys through these chutes that go down to these little fires they have them labeled as furnaces and then it says there's an entrance right there and if you look to the bottom right of the photo, you're gonna see that there's a tunnel filled with a bunch of hanging things. It's really hard to tell what they are, but maybe it could be something like meat bags from Fallout, or maybe it's some sort of chrysalis that one of the wild hunter variants will come out of. Who knows? If you look towards the top near the smokestacks, you're going to notice there is a wild hunter standing there as well as many other structures of theirs, meaning they will have a surface presence. This could be interesting for the prisoners of Scum Island. Since there are so many threats on the surface already, we're also going to be running into wild hunters potentially when they leave their caves to maybe hunt or gather supplies. While I do love Scum, it is very difficult, and I feel like this will add a ton of depth 
and interesting interactions with the wild hunters as far as both PvE and PvP gameplay goes. It's going to be a whole new dynamic in ballgame once this is added to Scum. If we look at the far top right corner of the photo, we can see that there are new structures there as well. It's hard to say if these are surface structures or things you would find underground in their caves, but nonetheless you can see them decorated with human hides, or skins I should say, and effigies and things like that. So maybe this is what we should look out for if we're trying to be careful and avoid these creatures. Or maybe we could use the shelters for ourselves. Maybe we can loot them. Who's to say? If we look towards the center of the image, we can see large rooms filled with eggs labeled as hatching chambers. In this tweet from Tomislav himself about the hatching chambers, he says the final concept art of the hatching chambers. There will be no spiders or dinosaurs here, I promise. And he shows us a close-up view of the hatching chamber centered right there on the left image, as well as a description of what the hatching chambers are from a conceptual take by the devs. It reads as follows. The hatching chamber is filled out with more developed eggs ready to be hatched. They are placed in the middle of the passageway, while walls are usually filled with bits or pieces of meat hanging or being attached. Sometimes, hunters attach live prisoners that are eventually eaten to death by newborn hunter babies. These passages surround the queen's chambers like spider webs. They are narrow, just a few meters wide, circular, and filled with eggs. The visibility is very low there, and there are many cracks and holes in the walls where hatched babies dwell or move around like spiders. There are plenty of beams set up in these passageways to keep the ceiling from crumbling down. Usually these beams are full of hunters' insignia slash markings, in the similar way as to totems, and decorated with bones, skulls, and branches. If we look at the bottom right of the image, in hindsight, that clearly matches the description of the small tunnels where the hatchling wild hunters dwell and feed upon hanging strips of meat as they crawl around like small spiders. Very creepy indeed. In this tweet, Thomas Love says, I'll just put this here to annoy people who say that 0.7 is one plane, one motorcycle update. All programmers were used for it. It was drawn on their backs. They had to stand really still so any work related to modular base building, cooking, AI, etc. was not possible. The game dev is hard, which he's right. They are doing so much for an early access game, and with such a small team, they're doing wonders. I just have to say, that I'm super impressed with what they're able to do with all of this. And in modern day, having developers that are dedicated and believe in what they're doing is hard to find. And it's very refreshing. But I digress. Let's get back to the main video. What this tweet really gives us is a closer look at some of the concept art for what will be in these hatching chambers. And I do want to focus them on them quite a bit because not only do they teach us about the society of these wild hunters, but it shows their biology and it shows descriptions of what we might find down in these caves such as how they move how they act and what they look like are we thinking spider people who knows we'll have to see if we look at this close-up view of the hatching chambers we can see that in the center of the room there's a large pile or mound of what appears to be some sort of nest that the eggs are sitting atop surrounded by smaller clusters around it we can also see, scattered throughout this chamber, there are those long spire furnaces that we saw in the previous photo, and they are ablaze. And it looks like there may be some things attached to them, but it's kind of hard to say from this point of view. We also see that there is a deliberate trail carved into the bottom, going to the bottom left of this room. Now, I believe these furnaces are to incubate the eggs. This would make the most sense, as they are located in the hatching chamber after all. If we look towards the top, we can see there's the entrance, or at least one of the entrances, whether intentional or not, and we can see what appears to be a prisoner with a backpack and a rifle peering down into the chamber, probably thinking about how they're going to escape or avoid the danger ahead. And I just want to point out, if this is to scale at all, look at the size of those eggs in comparison to the prisoner at the top of the room. Like, they are massive. Sure, there are different sizes, but some of the larger ones easily could fit a grown man inside of them. That's scary. 
nonetheless, I think these hatching chambers are going to be super cool, but probably super dangerous areas to explore, whether alone or in a group. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun even just exploring these areas. But the hatching chambers, like he said before, probably are going to have infant wild hunters crawling around like spiders and potentially their mother close by. So we should all be careful either way. This brings us to our next part, and that's going to be the small villages that the wild hunters live in scattered throughout the island and down in the caves. In this tweet, along with an image of some concept art for the structures that you may find in these villages, Tomislav says, the story continues. One day you might stumble into these on the island, or maybe they will find you first. Again, this is foreshadowing how dangerous the wild hunters really are. Now, if we look at these structures, you can see that there are several different types, but I want you to notice something. There are several fires around, and while we did see those with the furnaces and the hatching chambers, these ones are looking to be fires to keep warm, maybe cook food, provide light. This shows us that the wild hunters have tamed fire. This also is alluding to how intelligent they really are. They're not just going to be mindless puppets. They are very human-like if only in the most primitive sense. But this still is fascinating to see that they have their own little society broken off from the rest of the world. If we look at the far left structure, you could see that it looks like it's made of leather and twigs that are held together somehow. You can see skulls decorating it as well. Similar to the one on the left, the one left of center has effigies surrounding it. Again, it's got a teepee-like structure, very primitive, but it's gonna provide them protection from the elements nonetheless. Considering the wild hunters hunt humans and animals alike, I wouldn't be surprised if these shelters were made of a mix of human skin as well as animal skins from all over the island. It's a morbid thought, but it doesn't surprise me one bit. Also, you notice that these leathers look to be deliberately splattered and smeared with blood. Maybe this is a way to bless the buildings, ward off potential danger, or just a way to decorate. <laughs> Who knows, but it looks very intentional. So this gives us a glimpse into the violence and the hostility we are going to face at the hands of these wild hunters. Not to mention more and more totems as the huts go on from left to right. Here we have a close-up from one of the effigies. Thomas Lev says, Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. And it's kind of interesting that he says that. Um, he does allude to spiders quite a bit when he's talking about the wild hunters, even describing the babies as crawling around like spiders. And if you look at this effigy closely, you can see what look to be cobwebs on the different limbs of it. You can see the spikes at the bottom and the top and along the head all have spider webs on them. Not to mention, there is also what looks to be like fresh blood. So they definitely are deliberately building these things and they know what they're doing. So maybe they're a warning to say, stay out or maybe there's something to distract people, or maybe there's something religious. Who knows? Either way, they do make you feel some kind of way. And for me personally, it's not one of an easy feeling. In this tweet, Thomas Lav says, Morning, have you seen any spiders or dinosaurs yet? This one's from February 17th. Catch image gives us the most detailed and up close look at the villages of these wild hunters that we've seen so far. If you look to the left side, you can see that there is a body that is dismembered hanging from the top that has a face that almost looks like it's staring right at you. Maybe that's the fate some of us will meet on the island. Who can say? If you look at the ground, you can see that there are trails of blood leading into the different little shelters from all over the place. It looks like the wild hunters are very busy doing what their namesake says, hunting things from the wild, as we see both what appear to be dead human beings and dead animals alike strewn throughout this little village. If you look further to the right, you'll notice that there's this cave entrance 
that appears to be the origin of the blood trail. There are trees surrounding it, so we can tell that this is on the surface level. But if you look towards the entrance, well, that's where you're going to see an ominous outline, a silhouette of a very muscular figure coming out to the open with the light backlighting them. And they appear to be holding a pick of some sort. Very spooky stuff. Something being held in the left hand. Could it be part of one of their prey? Who knows? To me, this telegraphs how formidable these enemies might be. Look at his stature. Look at his build. That doesn't look like it's going to be something to easily just fight, especially without a firearm. They look pretty damn scary, and maybe this is the boss of them, the chief. If we pan over more to the right, you can see that there seems to be some sort of stone table or altar, and to me, that looks like a body part, maybe a torso or a leg, and it's bloodied sitting there. Maybe that's where their butcher is, maybe that's them preparing food, or again, it could be part of some sort of religious ceremony. Who can say at this point? But if you look even further to the right, there's something that's much more concerning to me. There is a body which either appears to have its head hanging down or even decapitated. It's kind of hard to see from this angle. But it is a man that's wearing jeans and a white t-shirt that is tied up. But the most interesting thing is just above him. You can see that on top of the shelter, written in blood, it says the words, smile for me. Was this written by one of the prisoners? Or was it written by one of the wild hunters? This is huge, because this means if it is written by one of the wild hunters, they definitely can communicate, and they have comprehension and understanding of what they're doing. They know that they're striking fear into people, and they're trying to use that to their advantage. And I find that fascinating. I can't wait to see how complex these creatures, really, I don't know if I want to call them humans at this point anyways, um, are when it comes to gameplay and, again, more history and stories and lore. I just find them so fascinating because we haven't really seen anything get this much of a background yet in Scum so far. This gives us a good glimpse into the lives of the Wild Hunters. And while at first glance they may look like savages, completely detached from their former human ways, this shows that they are more complex than meets the eye. They have different parts of their society dedicated to different parts of life, such as raising young, preparing food, and different areas where they live in their shelters. They even decorate these shelters and areas with effigies potentially used for religious purposes maybe? We can't really say, but because of this, we know that these wild hunters are much more sophisticated than meets the eye, and they're going to add a whole nother level of complexity and fun dynamics to the island of Scum when they do finally arrive. Lastly, this brings us to the most recent update we got from Thomas Laugh. This came out March 29th, 2022. So just yesterday, as of the time of me making this video. Tomislav says, A small update on the amazing spider caves. Still, in the concept phases, things will be changed a lot. Not even close to be in the actual game. If you get inside there, will be no way home. You can tell how enthusiastic Tomislav is about this, because you can see he's clearly trying to build a sense of suspense and fear. Yet he also wants to pique our morbid curiosity, because I'm sure we all want to see more about these wild hunters, and he's doing a great job with uh, these little drip feeds of information about them in his tweets. And this image does not disappoint when it comes to building anticipation like previously. While it does look 3D, it's kind of hard to tell whether this is a render in-game or if it's just 3D art. It is early and it is concept, just like Thomas Lab has already previously stated. But it is the closest and most detailed look we've gotten of these wild hunters so far nonetheless. Here we get a very detailed look at what I believe is to be the adult wild stalkers. Look at them. You can tell that they're vaguely human, but 
uncanny at the same time in the weirdest ways. I mean, look at the features they have. They have glowing eyes, long claws, and a wide gate. They're squatted down to the ground, and they have an angry, menacing look on their face, with a set of teeth to match. Then look how far that one is jumping. It's a good two or three feet off the ground. They kind of look emaciated and bony, but they don't look weak at the same time, if that makes sense. Now you can see that this prisoner right here is shooting at one, but it doesn't look like it's affecting it very much. If you take a look at its face, it doesn't look very phased by it at all. If you look behind it, there's another one crawling down from the roof. So you can see that they're both bipedal and quadrupedal, and they may be running across the roof as well as scurrying across the floors. And that is going to be a terrifying sight to behold when we finally do get down into these caves. But they do look like they're made of flesh and bone, so they probably can be killed with relative ease compared to, say, a sentry. If we look around the rest of the cave, you can see that there's another fire in the background, and there are many pairs of eyes peering into the action that's, you know, right at the entrance to the cave, or so I think is the entrance of the cave. And there's another shadowy figure in the back near that fire. I think bringing a squad down into the caves to clear them out with lots of firepower would be a ton of fun and a blast, literally. But I also think going in solo and trying to stealth your way through and avoid and loot this place would be a challenging and rewarding and just fun experience in itself as well. Either way, I cannot wait to try both out for myself. And while this is all the information we have so far about the Wild Hunters, I think I can patiently wait for whenever they're added to the game. I've learned that Game Pyres really does hold their work dear to them, and it means something to them. For example, when they said that point six was going to be great, it was great. The dead water like update was fantastic. We got boats and sharks and fishing. And as far as point seven goes, we got planes, we got traders and outposts, and sure they're primitive, but they build on what they say they will build on every time. So I have full faith in game players that one way or another, they're gonna hit it out of the park with these wild hunters, and it's gonna be something like never seen before in a survival PvP game like Scum. I don't think any of us are gonna be disappointed with the wild hunters when we see them roaming around the island. And on that note, that's all the information, stuff I have to offer about the Wild Hunters and Scum. Please let me know in the comments, I'm super interested to see if you are all excited about this, or maybe if you're one of the people that doesn't like it, why you don't want to see something like this in Scum. One way or another, it is expanding into something that we've never seen before, it's bigger than really any game up until this point. The detail with metabolism, survival, PvP building all in one place has never been done on this scale. Personally, I think these are going to skyrocket the game into a next level of just being amazing. It is already super fun and super detailed, but I mean, having more AI that can interact with us in more complex ways, in more dangerous ways, is going to be a lot of fun. So tell me what you think. If you liked this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, as far as lore goes, or backstory, or development updates, let me know, because I do plan on making more, if you guys wanted that. So, thanks for your continued support. I don't make money doing this, I do all my own editing, and right now it's just a hobby. I'm going through a lot of health issues and stuff, and it's just life's been weird, and me making this content has helped me out a lot with coming to terms with things that are happening around me and um, it's just kind of catharsis. So while I do enjoy making this content, I would appreciate any support you guys can offer because hopefully one day I can build a large enough community and we can all play on this daily and I could do this full time and just bring a better, more positive world to gaming in general. So thanks for watching. I love all of you guys. Um, be sure to check out my YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram and I will see you guys in the next video. Again, it's me, Hyper, and peace.